so that's the power of the group. So that's part of what I also wanted to talk to you about was being a, a woman veteran, getting involved in a veteran service organization because we still have uh, a disconnect between the good old boys club and what women veterans are trying to do within their uh, respective communities. So Shelly, I see you nodding in agree. So can you speak to that? And then uh, Carrie, you as well. Well, I, I just recently joined a VFW post 2224. Um, because of COVID, I haven't gone out to the meetings or anything yet. I'm just two months in. Um, I joined two months ago when I went to do an outreach event with uh, Fob Hope and they were out there because we were at another VFW post. And we've been talking about this. I've been talking about it for a long time, but you know, you want to be involved in something that is more than just being a member on paper, but the optics aren't great, right? So one of the, you know, and we always say, you know, we want to be the change. We want to, you know, we want to, you know, be the change and be involved. And a lot of things are just very, let's just be honest. It's a lot of male, white male, you know, dominated. And so you go, you're, I, I looked on the Zoom call for our last meeting and I said, okay, so now when I do get to go in person, I, at least now I know what it's going to look like when I walk in there. That's an affirmation. And, um, you know, it's great. Um, and, but being involved with veteran service organizations, so I am, I have my own, my own veteran service organization and we're, we, you know, we provide a service through our symposiums, but we are catalysts for connection. We are good partners. So one of the things that, things that we just talked about, and I talked about it earlier today, it's really about being a good partner in your community. So you can either be volunteering, and if you can volunteer, or if you have your own organization, resources are lean for uh, VSOs. So um, it, we, are all, we all have the same desire to serve our military community, right? And so finding alignment and being able to uh, leverage resources has always been key to me. How do you align and how do you leverage resources? Uh, dealing with the work that I do in workforce development, it also was very clear to us that if we did not break down silos, there would always be this competitive nature that the veteran service organizations themselves would have. And so on this last, these last eight years post-retirement, it has just been very, uh, it's been a mission of, of mine and, and, and many others to, to make sure that whenever we do anything, we do it from a place of wanting to partner and build community. So um, there aren't a lot of women veterans out there who look like me sitting at tables representing the military community. And I've been in positions where I've been in the room and I've had my other either female or male veteran counterparts, but they're not acknowledging me in the room as a black woman who is a veteran who served. The optics are just bad. We have to change the optics. And so the advantage, the advantage that I believe that I have, because I do have the uh, uh, opportunities of sitting at some very important tables and being in some very important rooms, is that I am the change. I am not invisible, I serve too. So in my introduction and everything that I do, and when I'm talking to other women, make sure that you carry the fact that you're a veteran. Your service is not is, is over in boots, but you continue to serve by doing exactly what you just said. Find a ver veteran service organization that you wanna serve with, volunteer for, be a part of, um, but also make sure that you also Carry that, wave your flag, girl. Let them know that you serve too. They, they need to know beyond any campaign that we could ever do, the voice that we have to talk about being women who serve um, and for some of, and for other, for many of us women of color who serve to change the optics, the narrative, the, the, the photo stock doesn't give us due diligence. We have the same photo stock following, you know, flying around and that's not good enough. We need more. We need better. We need to be able to let them know we served in the most diverse workforce the, in the world and that we were a part of that. And so being a part of veteran service organizations and trying to change that stigma, that's going to be, that's still going on. Those, those, that good old boy network and those things, that's still happening in some of those very legacy organizations. And that might be why it's so challenging for them to recruit people, but it's not everywhere and it's not happening for everyone. Sometimes it's even regional. So find a place where you fit in. I, 
I was drawn to the VFW because when I returned from Desert Shield, Desert Storm, um, and I, we lived in Garland, Texas in North Dallas, and my mom went to the VFW and they threw a party. So I was kind of drawn to the VFW always. And uh, so that's where I decided to put my membership and activity. But it's not the only place that I am. Thank you, Shelly. And you, Carrie? So I'm a member of the Women Veterans Alliance. I'm a member of American Legion, and I'm also a member of the VFW. And the, I'm at post 5878. I'm the judge adjutant, uh, which is just something really on paper, and I get a vote, which is kind of fun. Um, but what I've noticed in our VFW specifically is like my husband's 46, and everyone closest to him are, you know, 80, late 70s or 80 years old that are in that are showing up to help other veterans. And so when they go to move rock, guess who's moving it? It's just my husband moving it or me and my husband or whatever, because there's just not the able bodies. So it's like, we need to figure out how to, um, not necessarily rebrand because I think what the VFW is doing and has always done has been a very good advocate for veterans, for championing you know, laws and protections of all who serve. And I think it's a beautiful thing. When I competed for Miss Better in America, oddly enough, the VFW was the number one place that gave me money time and time again. I would go to different posts. I would talk about Miss Better in America. I would talk about homeless women veterans. And, and these men, they were all room full of men, unless I was talking to the auxiliary, were like absolutely not okay for our sisters. And I think there's just this incredible um, affection for one another who have served and and I just love that about the VFW. So it's always been a very welcoming experience for me, um, even though they are a, a lot older than I am. Um, but I love what the VFW stands for. And I think us that have served post 9-11, we really need to get involved in the VFW. If you want it to look different or talk different, then you gotta show up um, and participate in order to carry on the legacy, but also change the narrative, if you will. Um, and I think, I think they're all very important organizations. And I really love um, the Women Veterans Alliance because they're giving a voice to women in a different way and they're really just supporting women. Um, and Melissa Washington is one of the best connectors. And mm -hmm. oddly enough, um, well, I had emailed Shelly, but it got bounced back. But it's really because Melissa Washington had known both of us and knew we were both in Washington. Oh, and I'm in the Women Veterans Alliance too. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. she connected us. And so- yeah. Yeah, it was like, so because of her networking and creating this organization, mm -hmm. it brought women together to do amazing things for our sisters. And so I yeah. think it's very important to also, as a woman veteran, be a part of a woman veteran BSO as yep. well, um, in addition to those legacy ones, because we deserve to be mm -hmm. at both tables. Yeah, and we can speak to all the, all the needs, but the way you create network, it's like a system and it just work and you find yourself meeting some amazing, amazing, amazing um, women doing some great work. Well, I met Melissa Washington um, about four or five years ago up in um, San Francisco at the Marines Memorial Club and we were at a Vets and Tech event and I know the moment that I met her and the moment that she met me, we knew that we were going to work together and for the last three on conferences, she has given me the opportunity to film the veterans and media and entertainment uh, Women Veterans Alliance panels. Now these are women that the, the first two panels with the BME are women veterans that are working in the industry, uh, very willing and able to give advice to the younger women veterans who want to go into that industry. And then last October at the Women Veterans Alliance and Conference in Monterey, I filmed the, their book panel, which is uh, an awesome book panel with all women veteran authors. So we're all trying to figure out how to tell our stories because they need to be told, number one. And number two, people need to understand the sacrifices that all of us in one way or another have made in order to serve our country, but also to make it better for our sister veterans. Cheryl, just like you said, when you met Melissa Washington, you two knew you were gonna work together. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly the moment I 
physically met Shelly and she was so excited. Like she has this amazing energy about her, especially when she's getting ready to speak on stage or what have you. But she just like saw me, we, we said our names and she just had this beautiful warm smile and this amazing hug. And from that moment, we were just like, yep, we are in this together. And that first night I met her, she, I was like, I don't dance really that well. You want to get on stage? <laughs> but she's like, you want to be a part of this? Here's a t-shirt. And so for her intro, like from the gate, literally from the moment we met, we started working together and supporting each other. Um, and I knew, I knew of her and I knew of her organization. Um, and I was there to kind of, you know, do my research and hear what she had to say firsthand um, to get her onto the podcast. So I could be, you know, so I was there for that reason. But then when I met her, it was like, oh yeah, there's something way bigger between Shelly and I than just her coming onto the podcast. And it really has become such an amazing mm -hmm. partnership and sisterhood and just a, a beautiful friendship that has blossomed yeah. out of, out of supporting each other. Do you live the close to each other? No, about an hour. Washington State. <laughs> about a, about a, I guess about an hour. We did live closer, but you know, we were bought a home and moved up north a little bit. So I'm a little further away from her than I, I would have been. She's but, been since though, so that's good. Yeah, and I, I mean, from that connection that we made, um, I have to, you know, give a shout out to Carrie. She had a vision about something, and you're not hesitant when you connect with someone and you want to support what they're doing. I'm like, oh yeah, I was kind of thinking of something like that, but let's run with that. So She Wrote Talk has been born from this collaboration, and She Wrote Talk is just, oh my goodness, I, it was just an amazing experience. We we went through a lot to make that happen, and Carrie, her, her vision for it was I just, I don't have no words for it, but these are the things that happen um, when you can collaborate and really, I guess, make a huge, it's almost, I can't even, the word isn't coming to me, but what's the word that I need for this moment? Um, when you can really magnify You're something. Maximize. Yes, and maximize, yeah, maximize the uh, opportunity and, and impact that, and that you can cover. So, I'm excited about the things that we are going to be doing together. And She Wrote Talk, I, it was our first real collaborative effort. So, uh, so elaborate and tell me what She Wrote Talk is. Is that a radio program? Do you, I would love for it to be turned into a radio program. Um, what it is is a live event where you have eight women come in and share eight minutes of their story around a theme we have created. And so although we are two women veterans, we wanted to expand our reach and include our sisters outside of the military, outside of the veteran community who are doing amazing things in their communities, in their industries, in their homes, in their churches, in sports. So we really wanted to um, open, it, open the doors to receive other women who are making amazing changes for our society. Mm -hmm. And so each year we're gonna have a different theme. This, the first inaugural um, event was freedom and <laughs> the stories we had eight very different stories from um you know freedom from grief freedom from body image freedom from um being yourself a black gay woman like she spoke her story of freedom mm -hmm. uh we talked we had um our our uh, matriarch diane she's in her 70s and she came and she talked about her freedom from abuse and and figuring out herself and there were so many beautiful moments in all of that. And um, it was just so amazing. And we were able to, we were able to um, make some money, right? And we were, but bigger. So really the part of it that's so special to us was the fact that we want to give back to our women better in community by reaching out our hands to a bigger population. And so we will pick a women veteran led nonprofit every year to give a, pro, a portion of the proceeds back to. And this year we were able to raise $625 for Final Salute, mm -hmm. uh, which is what Miss Veteran America advocates for. And we chose that for obvious reasons. There was this connection for us both, but um, Shelly is currently running. And so we wanted to help her with her fundraising campaign as well. And it was just able to put all these things in a melting pot and create something so beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, Shiro Talk itself was, um, we were talking about what we wanted the event name to be. And we mm -hmm. talked about Empower Hour. We were just like throwing <laughs> things. We we're like, that's too much. 
Yes. And again, I do my best thinking and I open up my mind and I open up my heart right as I'm going to bed and I just kind of meditate and we talked about design and I went to bed and I had the vision of this R that I, I Googled the snot out of to make sure it was an original idea. But the R is actually looks like Rosie the Riveter. Yes. And I'll make sure you get that logo. And so the R is, I mean, her face is the head and then the tail of the R is her flexing. And we were able to create it. And I designed that logo as well. Um, and we were able to create everything around that because, you know, she speaks to every woman. Like she is an iconic image for so many, not just the military women, but mm -hmm. all women that you can do it. And so we really just um, leveraged that. And then deeper still, we found out the true, true woman who was really behind the rosy poster, the Ionic poster. Mm -hmm. And so her story we even share on Shiro Talk's website. And um, that's just like a foundational point that we were making. Like, you need to speak your story so we know the full history. And it just was like affirmation for what we were doing. And it is a live event. So we do want to meet face to face in person, have, you know, drinks and, and food and a whole event. But because of COVID, we shifted hardcore and we stay yeah. true to the mission <laughs> and we went all virtual. So yeah. we did, we recorded, um, we had a recording day for all of our speakers and then we went live yeah. uh, and did a full production. And so the learning curve was steep, but it was a very <laughs> successful event and we did it all with three of us. So Eve, who is not yeah. represented in this conversation, um, definitely was a part of the group project and ensuring its success. And I'm so excited for what next year is going to be. And it's still available on shirotalk.com. You can still purchase it and watch those amazing stories. Watch Carrie and I's banter back and forth. We had a really, really good time. And I'm excited about 2021. It's going to bring out more stories more boldness, more courage um, and it, than ever before. So each year, I know it's going to be just better and better or in my drill sergeant voice, gooder and gooder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's such a cool event. I can't wait. I can't wait to meet in person though. And we call yeah. the ladies of this year our founding mothers and we want them to come back whenever we are able to go face to face. So if you're able to come to that one where you're going to get a double dose of amazing, phenomenal women in that room. And yeah. uh, it's going to be pretty remarkable. Definitely. That's awesome. That's awesome. So um, I don't know how long we've been talking, but we've been talking for quite a while. <laughs> About an hour. About an hour. Yeah. So is there any closing comments that you would like to make? Um, you know, uh, you know, uh, Carrie, I actually met you online. I want to say I think it was about a year ago where you actually contacted me and to do a your, one of your podcasts, I think. And for one reason or the other, I wasn't able to to do it. But I'm really happy we finally connected. And thank you, Shelly, for because uh, we talked a couple of weeks ago, and you said, "Yeah, do you know Carrie?" I said, "Actually, we're together." <laughs> but I we have met online, so. Thank you for being the catalyst for bringing this together. What she's good at. Shelly is good at what she does. <laughs> so here's your chance for closing comments. What would you, here's, here's a question I love to ask all women veterans. Do you have daughters? Yes. Mm -hmm. You both have daughters. Yes. So if they come up to you and they say to you, mom, I think I want to join the military, the army, or whatever branch. It doesn't really matter. It's just the army. Okay, <laughs> okay, but go army. I get it. I joined because my mother was in. So, so what would you say? What would you say to your daughter about joining the army? I I cannot jump on board with this. No justice, no enlistment, peace. So if I'm going to advocate for this younger generation now to join because of the legacy they get to step into, I would be a hypocrite to tell my kids no. Although my mother's heart wants to protect them and say, maybe, maybe not, maybe we should talk about other opportunities, right? 
But here's the thing, real change, culture change, big shifts don't happen until you have 30% minority in an organization. And that's our society, period. And I cannot say, do not go enlist or do not serve in the military because we have come so far, so far from Molly Pitcher days through the, through civil rights movement, through women not having to get kicked out because they're pregnant or married. We have come so far, but we're not quite there. We're so close. We're like at 17, 18%. We're so close. So yes, serve, join, join this amazing lineage, this heritage that you are just the tip of the iceberg of getting to know because we are now sharing our stories boldly. And I, I absolutely would say do it um, to honor the women who came before you and to be that bridge and the hand up for those who are coming behind you. It only gets better and better if we continue to serve. Mm -hmm. Thank you, well said. And I would, I would say, you know, my mother's heart is just like Carrie's, you know, and my, um, we would always say, we know we serve, so you didn't have to, but if serving is what you want to do, <clears throat> I really want them to take the avenue that is going to give them the opportunity to have some, give her an opportunity to have some level set um, authority and power. Um, she's educated. Uh, and she, I would want her to go, definitely go in as an officer. Um, being able to be an example for other young women of color that, you know, not that being enlisted is bad, it's great, but um, being able to see there's more than just that. You can go in as an officer, you have options, you are educated, you can do great things. Go in and use your voice. Um, make sure, you know, knowing that the work that we've all done, all three of us have done, yes, they stand on our shoulders, but they can't just stand there. They have to activate. And and understand that we have worked so hard to give them voice. And so if they are in that moment, they have the courage to be able to recognize and stand up for those things that are unjust and not right. And that they understand the authority that they hold. They all, that I would also tell her that um, if she, while she is serving, that her example, her ability to be an example is powerful. There is some little girl some little black or brown girl wanting to know if it's possible. So she would be yet another beacon of hope and light, letting them know that it's possible. And for all women and for all girls, it is very important that we know that our, the, the, the role that we play and the authority that we hold, the power that we hold, and to embrace that, to use that with grace, to use that with love and wisdom. And to always seek, always to seek out understanding, wisdom and understanding um, as you grow through the ranks. So I, um, I, that would be my, my message to her if she wanted to serve. Man, and wouldn't it be such a thing to have a woman president, all your top generals in every branch be women? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, like that sounds pretty dang cool. And it's so very possible because they are, I mean, we prove ourselves the ability to do these things. And um, I think that would just be so cool. Like, I don't know. Everything is possible. Things. Yeah, everything is possible. Our daughters just, they're seeing us. They're seeing us do what we're doing now. Carrie's daughter, she's going to have her own podcast segment in no time. My oh, daughter, <laughs> she's, a STEM, she's a STEM giant and she's doing some great things in science. And, and this whole situation is her sweet spot. She's about to go off and do great things. I don't think it, you know, whatever it is, whether they just decide to serve or not, um, they are, they have the ability and opportunity now to go, go well beyond what we were able to do. And that's because of what we did. And I think that's what matters. That's a perfect ending for the show. Thank you so very much for the opportunity to tell your stories. And uh, thank you for being shiny examples of moving onward, upward, and forward, because that's all we can do. Thank you so much. Yeah, this was fun. This was fun. <laughs>